Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be answering some questions that people are having about the Strike Planner. A bunch of players have been away for a while, or we just have a group of very, very new players to this, and they're like, oh my god, what have you done to the mission editor? It's not nearly as scary as it looks, and I'll kind of walk you through sort of my workflow in a pretty typical strike sort of a scenario. So here we are in the tip of Florida down here, and uh, down here we're going to be striking Havana, Havana, because why not? It's there. So we're going to go ahead and set up a pretty standard mission here with the support elements. We're going to use the flight plan editor a little bit here to kind of play with some things and kind of just show you sort of what's different as for how I would use that information. So first things first, uh, let's get ourselves a support track going here. Our support track is going to take care of both fuel as well as some radar services. So we'll go ahead. I like that. Uh, support services limited liability corporation because why not let's go down here we'll do a support mission press okie doke it's going to bring up our mission editor now you're probably going to see a bunch of brand new things on here some of this looks different uh, one thing you probably want to do is hide that it's just going to make your life just a little bit simpler for uh, what we're doing we also have this dynamic option now this is very 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 advanced and it's uh, very much a work in progress because this is a beta version of command so this is something we'll deal with in a later video it's actually pretty wild how that works so let's go ahead and grab my support elements here we got us a refueling as well as a warning star here a good thing to go ahead and use the one third rule in this one uh, the other thing i'm going to do too is under this mcon i'm going to go ahead and select it to, to it it's going to be using active radar and that's going to work pretty well for us and the other thing you probably noticed coming down here is we now can do takeoff times and time on targets this is a really big deal for us the reason I say that is on account of the fact that I want to make sure that I have a good uh, high value cap going on before my aircraft get to that position. So what I'm going to do here is uh, it's currently 1130 Zulu time. I'm going to go ahead and order these guys to take off at, uh, let's call it 1140. So that's going to give us about 10 minutes time to go ahead and set up those other aircraft. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back down here, control right click, we'll do a rectangle, go ahead and define my little have cap zone and press control F11. We're going to go ahead and say HAV cap. <laughs> That's got a nice little pop there. Patrol AW. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab four of my phantoms here. One, uh, we'll grab Pash 1. Oh, and I've got everybody. Pash 2, Pash 3, Pash 4. Okay, that looks pretty good. Toss them down here. We're going to order them size of two. One third rule sounds good to me. We're also going to make sure that uh, after they do an engagement, they don't go running away, which is always frustrating. Uh, use air-to-air -air guns. Oh, heck yeah. We definitely want that. Cool. So let's select that option. Have cap is set. We're also going to make sure that they don't go wandering down to Cuba to try to become, you know, Tom Cruises and stuff like that. So it looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. And we're going to go ahead and define their takeoff time to be uh, 1130 and uh, I don't know, 30 seconds. So they take off, they start the takeoff process 30 seconds. Now, the great thing here is remember our support services limited liability corporation, they're not going to take off until 1140, giving these guys time to get into position. See how useful that is? So now what we're going to do is plan our main strike down in Havana. So I'm going to come down to Havana. I'm going to click on my target, which is going to be uh, this level of the uh, airbrace here. Let's see that little bit. Control F11. Uh, let's see. Um, we'll be very polite here. Very polite here. Perfect. We'll go ahead and call this a land strike. Press okie doke. And now things get a little more complicated. So uh, things over here on this side are pretty much the same. I don't know where anything is, so I'm just going to kind of be old school here. I'm just going to take the runway off. The hangars sound pretty yummy to me. We also have this also critical uh, fuel tank. Uh, one of the things I learned is playing command for as long as I have is that th this isn't how you should do this. Really what you should do is have four or five missions. Each mission has its own target at the airbase. Or what I see some people do is they'll actually get people into do a support mission and then basically blow everybody up when they get there kind of a thing. Those both work well, but we don't need to worry about that today. So let's go ahead and grab my strikers. We're going to be using F4Es. Uh, this is the correct Phantom. It's also it's the correct loadout of uh, having a bunch of Mark 82s, just a ton of them. Sweet. A uh, flight size, we're going to set the flight size to six, so it's going to be slightly larger. Now, the next thing you're probably going to notice is if you come down here, we've got some new buttons to play with here. We've got attack methods and split distances and off-axis attacks and everything like that. Good. That's exactly what we want. Before I do that, though, I'm going to set a time on target to be, uh, let's call it 1230. I should give them plenty of time for everything to get in place before we start a mission. Notice as soon as I did that, by the way, that you noticed we had this new flight plan up here. We also have a holding pattern right here, which is really, really awesome. Now, you can get a little old-fashioned with this. I can actually click on these points here. I can press F2, and you can actually come in and customize each and every one of those waypoints, something we've done before. Make sure before you do that, by the way, you actually come down here and you like click these guys to make sure the one that you're actually editing is the one you're editing. Now, the other thing we can do, and this is really, really cool, is if I click come down here and press flight plan editor you'll notice it actually pops up a little uh, GUI here that allows me to customize all the points on the flight plan themselves like one thing you're going to notice is that we have all the different aircraft here 
And we also, of course, have all the different flights up here as well. You can do things like changing the aircraft. We can copy the flight plan, paste it. We can insert waypoints, which is exactly what I intend to do here. We can edit speeds. We can do everything. As a general rule, of, this is what I found kind of the workflow for me. Do all your waypoint stuff, then do all your altitude and speed stuff. Also, make sure whatever your time on target is, is set before you start running around and starting to click these. These little guys, by the way, these little locks allow you to set certain times of day or certain types of speeds. So for example, if I wanted to dial a speed to be this speed, that's going to change my time on target, which requires a change in all the speeds here. Yeah, we have time on target now, which is freaking awesome. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add an extra waypoint uh, right after you can see my turning point highlights right here. I want a waypoint that comes after hold end to refuel the aircraft. So I'm going to press insert waypoint. And it's going to get all grumpy at me. And it's going to say, did you mean turning point? What have you done? So I'm like, no, I don't want a turning point. I want a refuel. Yes. Just like that. We now have a refueling point. So remember how I set up that cool little refueling track? Check this out. My aircraft are intentionally going to get gas on the way to their target area to actually get gas on the way, then come back and go do their thing. Isn't that cool? I love that feature. I mean, this, oh man, this is something I've wanted for so long. Uh, the other thing I like to do is I like to tweak altitudes. Like I'm looking right now and I can see, actually, let's go grab a bone and Cheetah 472. Cheetah 47, we're going to say, uh, let's see here, holding point. I think we added the waypoint right here. Insert waypoint. Looks good to me. There's that lovely waypoint four. We're going to switch that to a refueling waypoint as well. Yeah, it's fine. Grab it and we're going to go ahead and toss it right here. And just like that, we now have two refueling waypoints, which are awesome because now I can go ahead and do stuff. So the other thing I like to do here, and by the way, be careful because you have all the airplanes here and you can change which one's which. So just be mindful of what you're changing here. The other thing I'm going to do is down at target, uh, 200 feet's too low. Uh, if I do 200 feet, they'll get chewed up by 23 millimeter cannons, which eh, some people like that. I don't. So I'm going to go edit speed altitude, come in here. I'm going to click them up to afterburner. I'm going to pop them up to 2,000 feet. So now when they cross the target, they're going to be going out a lot faster, and they're going to be just a tiny bit higher. I'm also going to go down to Bones 1.6 here. Oh, we have a little target. Click on that one right here. Altitude, edit speed and altitude. We're going to set them up to 2,000, go up to afterburner. So now we have a refuel point as well as a place to burn a little extra gas too when we're over the target. Uh, the other thing that people do, which I think is really, really super clever, is see how we have holds now? We can actually change the altitude of the hold. So you notice right now my hold starts at two grand. Why waste fuel at low altitude when you could change it to high altitude and actually take advantage of the thinner air for the purposes of your hold? Obviously, you don't want to let the enemies know that you're holding, but it's a, I think it's a perfectly valid strategy. Hold start, and we're going to go ahead and edit the speed and altitude. We're going to go up to, oh, that would have been a mistake. Hover, yeah, definitely hover. That's going to be the speed I want to travel at, 36,000 feet. So you can see we're loitering at 36 for a hold, so we can save gas. We're going to get gas, we're going to do our thing, and then we're going to attack at 2,000 feet. So this is all set and ready to rock. Now you're probably going, hey, what about all these like attack methods and stuff like that? I'm not going to play with these today. I have a separate video on that if you want to kind of take a look at them. If you change these or you change the time on target, I got some bad news. These two flights will reset that flight plan. It'll regenerate every single time you do it. I sort of wish there was like a regen button here that would like hold off until you click it or it doesn't do it until it launches. But as it is now, if you make any changes here, it's going to regenerate all that work. It's going to be gone. So just be mindful of that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to Homestead Air Base, click right here, press F6. I'm going to go ahead and grab my lovely little F4Ds. Remember how we reserved some of them? I'm going to right click, assign a mission, escorts. Now I did that that way because it's just a little easier for me. It's again, another one of those things that play the game too long. It just works best for me. But one thing I will do is go back to F11. Notice, by the way, our flights are perfectly intact. Nothing bad happened. Go to escorts. I'm going to set my flight size to two. If you're wondering about that, by the way, it's because I have eight. And six. So unless I have 48 aircraft, there's no way we're going to get a nice uh, LCD there. So um, we're going to have to deal with two. So, oh, well, that's just how big they're going to be. The other thing I want to do, too, is I'm going to go over to my MCON Ruhr. And I'm going to come over here and make it so that they actually use the air-to-air -air guns and run themselves out of ammunition. Another thing you can actually do here is this cool button, engage until shotgun. I'm going to engage into Winchester. Keep dropping bombs, people. Like, that's, that's what we gave you bombs for. Like, let them rip. So now there's one more thing we're going to take a look at before we, uh, we take a look at the next section. And that is going to be the air tasking order. So the air tasking order now gives you the ability to see all of your flights in one place. Uh, people who are fans of Falcon, you know exactly what this looks like. So I can actually come in here and go boing, and you can see everybody. We can see what time they're taking off. We can change who's flying. We can change their names if you're one of those kind of people. I don't know. I like doing it. Because remember, if you name a flight, they live longer. So we have our local objective time. We have Zulu time. All these things can be locked. You can change your takeoff. You can change your landing position. Everything is here in nice, nice, easy to read position. So that's good to go. Go ahead and close that. And that's it. 
let's go ahead and uh, quickly uh, auto save that sucker just in case because you know, I always miss that one thing and I don't want to be that guy who's like whoopsies and have to run back and reset it all. All right, let's see what happens here. So we're going to go ahead and get going. So as you recall, our first flight starts the process at 11.30 and 30 seconds. So um, about two minutes after that particular point, what he's going to do is he's going to come ripping into the sky. Ding. Aw, psyched me out. I forgot these are pretty long runways, so that's going to affect you. Oh, there he goes. You psyched me out. How could you? It's okay, though. So he's going to get going. It goes my strato tankers, and of course, uh, there goes my escort. Remember how I set the escort to get there first? Check this out. They're just going to fly right over there, and they're going to start doing their little escorty thing first. I'm going to flag all these guys as bad guys, because I'm pretty confident they're not friendly. So then, of course, we wait around for a while. At any point, we can come up here and see the ATO. Go to the ATO, we can see the takeoff time is going to be 6.52 in the AM scale. Uh, that's about five minutes from now. I think I gave them just enough time to get this safely. All right, that's going to be pretty darn soon. So now, of course, the process of getting those guys are airborne. There they go. So they're taking off. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, it's gone now. Can't see it. There's my refueling point. So check it out. So these guys, are, this is, of course, our escorts. So the escorts can take off at any time. Here's one of my squads here. Bones, 1-6. They enter into the flight. Check this out. They are climbing up to 36,000 feet. Isn't that so clever? It's just better to have them up at that altitude, especially if you got, like, a really big package. Like, I've recreated, like, raids in, like, you know, Germany for World War II with B-29s and stuff like that. I'm, yes, the B-29 was not used in the Western Front deal. But we've actually done it with like big squadrons like that and have 200 bombers all coordinated at the time. That's a lot of flying around. So you got to kind of give them a chance to kind of do it. But they'll fly their holding pattern and off they go. So here they go. Uh, this is a flight. Uh, Bones 1-6 is going to immediately travel over to position 4. They're going to say, hey, give me some combustibles. Get a bunch of combustibles. Uh, notice now that our escorts immediately ran ahead, which is exactly what we hoped they would do. They're going to go ahead and get themselves in a big old dogfight. That is more AIM 7s than I think I've ever seen at one time that actually hits something. I think the overall strike rate for AIM 7s in the Vietnam War was like 5 or 6%. It was just embarrassing. Oh, 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 oh. Mm, there's the other one. Wow, he fired three more and it still didn't hit. <laughs> Come on, guys. You can do it. Oh, we got a couple more. And I believe those are probably Sam's. Yeah, those are Sam's. Whoop, oh, splattered. Splattered. And it looks like my thuds are doing what thuds do best, which is uh, fire missiles that just kind of innocently go flying into decoys or trees. Depends on which version of the missile. I believe you had to fill out a form to fire that particular missile, but that's all right. We'll mark these guys as hostile. Notice my escorts are doing what I asked them to do nicely here, and they're doing the escort thing. Meanwhile, of course, so my strikers are right on time. Uh, the clock says they have two minutes to get to the target zone here, which is fantastic. There's my thuds. Uh, there's my group. That's Bones 1-6. And I believe two minutes behind them is Cheetah 4-7. Wonderful. So Bones 1-7. They've got a nice full tank of combustibles here. <laughs> That's a lot of uh, sidewinders. Not sidewinders. Um, uh, not, I think they were standards at this point. No, shrikes. Shrikes is the word I was looking for. That was a lot of shrikes. All right. Here comes my crew. The time is 7.32. They're two minutes late. You're sitting there going, but, but you ordered them to be there at 7.30. Did you notice them turn around? Because if they didn't turn around, they would have been within 10 seconds of where they're supposed to be. Notice, by the way, they're popping up to the correct altitude. They do their bombing thing, make a big splat. Oh, here comes the next group. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, yeah, Mark 82s. If those guys don't have a Vietnam camouflage, like kind of like the jungle green pattern on them, I'd be disappointed. So they're going to do a big donut here. And uh, this is fantastic because they're basically going to come flying right back home now. So they're going to go ahead and do the little uh, F4 thing, which involves, oh, getting a cheap shot. Oh. Dropped a couple more bombs there. Fantastic. Everybody hits the gas. Uh, one of them obviously took some battle damage because he's, he's apparently become a non-commissioned officer somehow along the way back. I think he means he has no communication. So he's heading back. He's heading back. Uh, we had a couple hits, actually, but that's perfectly fine because you all did exactly what I asked you to do, which was to get some gas on the way over, meet up at the same time, and then head home. So everybody's heading out. Everybody's cruising, we're going back, and we're all going to go land at our base here, and then we can go evaluate to see how well we did. By the way, you can define the speed that they land in here. Everybody landed. And I believe that is one crew of this, probably yeah, one of the thuds. Go land, will you? All right, well, let's see how we did here. Let's see, I crashed one hangar. I blew up the control tower. Uh, we splashed a couple of these, which I'm happy about. Blew up a couple of this. We didn't do a lot of damage. I mean, I'm gonna go take a look in a second, but let's see here. They fired an awful lot of things at us. All these like 23 and 25s, a couple of atolls, plenty of uh, SA-2Cs. These things are embarrassingly hard to shoot. Scrolling down here, they lost a bunch of stuff. And look at that, one loss. Now that was an achievement. I don't know about you, but with this era equipment, with that organized of an opponent, I'm actually, I don't know, I'm kind of proud of that. Nice job. Nice job. I get a gold star, gold star. So what I'm going to do now is let's go inspect what the actual damage looks like here. 
Um, we definitely splattered that one hangar. It looks like we speckled stuff on this side of the runway. And it looks like there were some aircraft stored here. So with a little bit more intelligence, we could have actually, <laughs> you know what I mean, that kind of intelligence and that kind of intelligence. We probably could have come in here and hit the exact places where they were. And of course, you can see that we did a really nice job with minimal losses. And everything was basically on time. So hopefully that video helps you out as far as seeing how the strike planner works and the ATO works and the flight plan editor. That's kind of how I've been using it. Uh, if you want to get a little more complicated, and by a little more complicated, I mean complicated plus plus, uh, they have this thing called an operation planner, but I'm going to say that for another day. Other than that, enjoy.